This is a deep learning paper summary from Henry AI Labs. This video covers progressive growing of GANs. Progressive growing of GANs is one of the most popular examples of the success of GANs. Uh, this image shown on the title slide here, these are celebrity images that have been completely generated, they don't exist, and it really is amazing that they've achieved such a high resolution and such a convincing output of their images. So the high level idea of the progressive growing GANs model is that uh, if you break up the problem of high resolution images into these substructures of lower resolution, you know, you know, because like a, a intuitively, like if you have a 1024 by 1024 image and you downsample it to 512 by 512, there's like a high uh, level of dependence between these two uh, scales. So the idea is uh, to progressively fade in layers once uh, the lower resolutions hit some level of convergence, and they do this all the way up in multiples of two until they get to this high resolution 1024 by 1024. So like a more, uh, so back more into the weeds of how this is implemented, is what they do is uh, they progressively, well, well they progressively go, but, but what they do is they, uh, they fade in the new layers. They don't just like add this new layer and then boom, start training the new layer. They have like a more, uh, you know, a more smooth integration technique. So what they do is they take the 16 by 16 and they upsample it to 32 by 32 using just the nearest neighbor interpolation. And then with the new layer, you know, they, they still have this new layer. It's kind of like when you have like a highway network and you can kind of like uh, split the intermediate results. This isn't quite like that, but you know, it's like you take the intermediate output and then you upsample it with the 2x nearest neighbor. And then you also send that input to the, to the new layer for it to, you know, train and learn and output its own image. And then you weight each of these images with this alpha parameter and you combine that into the new output. And so this is like a mirror image of how the discriminator is trained as well. So this image just shows uh, the uh, Wasserstein loss scan compared to the progressively growing GAN. So on the left in the A set is the Wasserstein and the B is the progressively growing. And this is on uh, 128 by 128 resolution. And so then, so now they begin to show you like, if you're going to be training on 1024 by 1024, you have to be really conscious of your batch size because you're talking about putting a ton of memory into the GPU. Like on most of, you know, they, they're going to use eight, uh, like Tesla V100 GPUs to do this. But like if mo most people who just are using like a gaming desktop at, at their house or, you know, maybe, maybe you have some kind of more sophisticated machine, but. It's like if you're going to try to put a batch size of 64, 1024 by 1024 uh, images into your GAN, you're going to run out of memory. So they show from B to C, you can just see how badly the um, generator is affected from the mini batch going from 64 to 16. So then, and then on the far on the H, they show, uh, you know, they're going to add all the tricks that we're then going to talk about in the video to uh, get better results with the size 16 mini batch. So the first idea is, you know, in addition to progressively growing layers, obviously, is uh, mini batch standard deviation. And this comes from the improved techniques for training GANs article on the paper where they, uh, you know, they do a more complicated system of comparing similarity of images within the generated batch. All they're gonna do here is just take the standard deviation of each feature in the mini batch and then they're just gonna comprise a new feature map based on this and just append it to one of the inter intermediate representations in the discriminator. And then another idea is uh, equalized learning rate. And they also do uh, something called pixel-wise feature normalization, which isn't gonna be talked about in this video. But the equalized learning rate, the reason that I think this idea is like pretty important to think about is because, you know, a lot of the times when you see these models with like cascading layers or adding new layers, they have some kind of like learning rate scheduler you know, it'd be like the progressively, you know, the newly added layer might have like a learning rate of like 0 0.001, whereas the already trained layers, they have a much smaller learning rate. But what they do is they just use this, uh, you know, Hayes initializer, who's like a famous researcher. He uh, like designed this uh, layer normalization technique and they just uh, do this like at runtime, but they don't really put any emphasis on some kind of strategic initialization of the new layer. So this slide just shows the uh, like the overall architecture of the progressively growing GAN model once it gets all the way up to 1024 by 1024. 
And then this slide shows uh, the nearest neighbor comparison with the generated images on the Celebe data set. So it's kind of interesting just to see, uh, you know, like the uh, variance in the, you know, the diversity of the images the generator is able to produce, even though, you know, the training set doesn't really have these exact images in it. And then uh, just to show that the progressively growing GAN model works well on, you know, image data sets other than faces is to show them in this uh, image. So then uh, some more interesting things from the paper are just that uh, they see a 5.4 times speed up with the progressively growing model. You know, they train on a data set of faces consisting of 30,000 images at 1024 by 1024. And then their computing setup is that they have uh, eight Tesla V100 GPUs and they train this for four days straight. So thanks for watching this video. Uh, please subscribe for more deep learning videos.